Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Johnny got a toy golf set when he was three, and from that day on, he was hooked. All he wanted to do was golf, golf, golf. He'd be on the links before school, after school. All he ever wanted was to go pro. And then, one day, when he was holding his grandson and thinking about his 12 handicap, Johnny realized it just might not happen for him. But you know what did happen for him? He switched to Geico and saved a bunch of money on car insurance. So that was good, and so was hanging out with his grandson. Experience medieval times. A world of excitement, adventure, and wonder. Feast upon a delectable four-course meal. And behold authentic jousting and swordsmanship. It's the perfect place for celebration and revelry. New power, new show. Kids and students, just $34.95. Visit MedievalTimes.com. Here's a spoiler alert. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast arena. Coming to the ring at this time... Oh, you didn't know? You have better come! Somebody! First, representing this week in Geek, and from parts unknown, he is Mike, the Birdman, Don. I can't believe it. That Gerald is presenting the quarterly budget report with finger puppets? Look, here comes a 1.7% decrease in fixed overhead. Hello, everybody. No. I can't believe how easy it was to save hundreds of dollars on my car insurance with GEICO. Who are you? The projected increase in organic Q3 revenue. Hooray! Believe it. GEICO could save you 15% or more on car insurance. One hardcore D-O-double-D. I'm a nice man. I'm a nice man. His tag team partner... Presenting the GeekCast Radio Network and hailing from the outer reaches of your mind, he is Mike TFG1 Blanchard. I got four words for you. Check out my ass. Experience medieval times. A world of excitement, adventure, and wonder. Feast upon a delectable four-course meal. And behold authentic jousting and swordsmanship. It's the perfect place for celebration and revelry. New power, new show. Kids and students, just $34.95. Visit MedievalTimes.com. And from the Great White North, here is your special guest referee, Ryan. The uneven flow. And the multi always gets his mad. You are listening to Mayhem Mikes. And now, uh, let's get ready to podcast! Hello and welcome to Mayhem Mikes. This is episode 49 and... We got sucked into a black hole, folks. We haven't had an episode... Well, we had an episode in, like, what, December or something? To be fair, the black hole was one of the worst Raws of all time, followed by another really bad one. (laughs) Yeah. So our last episode was November 26th, 2018, where we talked about SmackDown 1000 and other WWE thoughts. The last pay-per-view we did was... Hell in a Cell from 2018. We are not going to be recapping any of the pay-per-views from that point on till now. Uh, I didn't even watch. What was the last one before uh, Fastlane? I didn't even watch Fastlane. Oh, really? Fastlane was this. So we'll say this. Uh, this was probably the best Fastlane I think they've done. Uh, that's not saying a lot, but it was. 
It was entertaining. It's not that I didn't want to watch. I mean, I've got a lot of stuff going on, but it's one of those things where I knew it was coming and I knew it was here, and I'm like, okay, uh huh, sure, I'll get to it because we weren't going to record anytime soon at that point, whatever. And I'm like, whatever, uh, I'll just watch Raw and watch the recap, and I never actually watched Fast. And to its credit, the shows have been pretty good, especially since what I mentioned, that kind of disastrous episode uh, right around the beginning of the new year. Uh, oh, it was not good. And yeah, it's been much better since then. SmackDown's been good for almost a year now. Uh, it's crazy to me how much better it's been, but we'll get into how uh, that may change in the near future. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Yeah, well, there's been been some good and some bad as usual. So, I mean, it's WrestleMania season. We're on the road to WrestleMania. I did watch, like I said, Royal Rumble and Elimination Chamber. I thought they were good. They weren't god awful. Uh, some of the screw jobs that are happening in WWE though are like, oh, come on, really? Uh so, yeah, we'll get into it when we hit the WrestleMania card, I think. Yeah. Let's start with some positive stuff, though, because I wanted to talk about the Hall of Fame inductees. Yes, the Hall of Fame. So, the list, you know, the Warrior Award, which I've been critical of, mostly because the Ultimate Warrior was a terrible human being uh, in real life. Nothing to do with the wrestling. But anyway, it finally goes to Sue Atchison, who is... Atchison, sorry who is a WWE executive who does an awful lot with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And it's nice. That's somebody who should be recognized. So that's an improvement. Uh, we've, in terms of actual sort of wrestlers going in, we have the Hart Foundation, Harlem Heat, and DX as a group. Then we have Brutus the Barber, Beefcake, Tori Wilson, and the Honky Tonk Man as individuals. Sweet. And I have no problem with any of these. So... Some people have had an issue with Tori Wilson, which I disagree. She was just, she was a female performer and wrestler during a time when they weren't taken seriously, just to be blunt. You know, WWE wasn't interested in using them as wrestlers or as the way they're shown now, which is unfortunate. And there's been others you know, I couldn't be happier that Beth Phoenix is back because she was somebody, she was a great wrestler. She was amazing. But she was there at a time where they weren't interesting and interested in the wrestling. It was yeah. about the, you know, bra and panties and the women models and that kind of thing. And so I'm so happy she gets another chance now. Even if it's temporary or whatever it is, it's cool to see her actually get to wrestle against wrestlers. Wait, is she actually wrestling? Yeah, she's uh, there full-time and has a WrestleMania match that we'll get into. Uh, she looked great this week as well. So it's nice that, like I said, she gets the chance to work against people that are also wrestlers. It's not joke stuff with... Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's not you know, no disrespect meant to Santina Morella or <laughs> some of the you know people she worked with, but it's it's cool to get her... to see her get the chance to do what she's always wanted to do. So. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the Honky Tonk Man, what more can you say about him? He's the longest reigning intercontinental champion ever. And... Say what you want about his wrestling, that kind of thing, but he was good, and man, I hated him as a kid. <laughs> he did his job real well. Yeah. Uh, I love that Harlem Heat's getting in, because isn't Book already a, a Hall of Famer? Yeah, and yeah, Steve Booker Ray does a lot of stuff behind the scenes, but their tag team as a whole was one of the best. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Heart Foundation, I mean, Jim Neidhart, individually, it would be tough to put him in, but he deserves it. He's, yeah. He I, was great. It's unfortunate he had all the issues with addiction. Yeah. And he's gone now, partially because of it as well. Just Right. Yeah. yeah. 
it's sad that some of these people get inducted after they're gone. Yeah, posthumously. Yeah, I, I mean, what he wasn't already inducted on his own, though, right? No, Brett is, but Jim wasn't. Yeah. Okay. Honestly, and this might be sad to say, but I think inducting the Hart Foundation as a whole might be the only way he could get in. Yeah, I would tend to agree, unfortunately, and that's why I think it's a good it's a good move. Mm-hmm. Also, I mean, the Hart Foundation, like Harlem Heat, kind of paved the way for a lot of other tag teams, and everybody remembers them. Yep. You know, and Brutus Beefcake as well. I've heard some people say, well, he didn't do a lot on his own. He was a big part. I mean, the barber shop was a huge part of Shawn Michaels' career, though. Yeah. Everybody yeah. remembers that. So, yeah. And the last one I wanted to get to was DX. Uh, China should be in on her own, flat out. But if this is one of the ways to get her in, uh, it's definitely it's worth it. So. Yeah, it is. I always liked DX. I always see my, I don't want to say exposure, but it's the only word I can think of, to D-Generation X, honestly, was just Triple H and Sean. It was hardly, like, when I first recognized DX and everything else, it was them doing all their stunts and everything else, all the, like, Sean working in a cafeteria and Triple H having to go get him kind of a thing, and having to reunite you know, the whole Xing of the thing and the suck it and the this and the that and the whatever else. Yeah, and I, mean, I think we've, you've watched the Monday Night War documentary series, mm-hmm. yeah. whatever you want to call it, which uh, they kind of pumped up DX's role in that a little more than they were at the time. Yeah, true. But, uh, but they were still a really big part of it all, and as well... Each of the people have gone on to do a lot of things behind the scenes. You know, Road Dog is still with the company, does an awful lot of work. X-Pac was responsible for a lot of the younger talent when they would come into WWE. Billy Gunn was a trainer forever until recently. Yeah. And, you know, there's not too much else to say about Sean and Hunter at this point. So yeah, I mean, there's so <laughs> many things that have been said about Sean and Hunter. They are, yeah, they're Hall of Famers about 12 times over, so yeah, exactly. there's no point in saying anything yeah, about that. No. Was, correct me if I'm wrong, it was on the, ori- I think it was on the original Tough Enough. Wasn't Billy one of the trainers, or am I misremembering that? I know there I'm, was an older guy on the original Tough Enough named Billy that was one of the trainers, but I don't know if it was Billy Gunn. I'm sure he was a trainer on one of them. Uh, I cannot, for the life of me, remember which seasons. But, yeah, by the way, they uh, one thing I'll note, they filed for the trademark for Tough Enough. Yeah. I wonder if that, that means... Yeah, okay. I wasn't sure if you had or not. Oh, I yeah. wonder if that means it'll, it'll come back. I always enjoyed it, except for I wasn't a big fan of the last one. Uh, I can't remember... It had. I thought it had another title or something to it too. But there as much was, as I like Jericho, uh, it was weird. I much. My favorite season was the. St- we've talked about this before, but anyway, I loved the Stone Cold season. Yeah, the Stone Cold season was amazing. Bill DeMott. Bill DeMott was the one. Yeah. Also, geez, awesome. talk about uh, some talent on that. The Patrick, who would become Velveteen Dream, was slated. He was probably he had a good shot at winning it and then broke his ankle it's nice that he got some closure and has gotten a good story because he's huge in nxt now uh just don't get called up apparently because <laughs> you're called yeah. up from nxt and you lose your title for no reason to charlotte's on anyway <laughs> i mean we'll have to uh do uh another episode just on Tough Enough itself. I just pulled up the general Tough Enough. The thing has had like five seasons yeah. overall. Uh, the Stone Cold season was I believe the fifth season. No, uh, fourth. The fifth one was the last, the Hulk Hogan page, and who was the third judge? I can't remember. And then Jericho. The yeah. sort of by committee. Didn't 
Uh, did not. No, no, no. It was no. You like no. it. According to my information, and again, Wikipedia, take with a grain of salt. Season five was Stone Cold. Season six was Jericho, Renee, Byron. Oh, I thought you uh, said the, there was only five seasons, though. Well, I didn't realize that because I didn't scroll all the way down. I, oh, okay. Season five so far. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you're right. There is six. Uh, Sorry, no. I was just basing it on that it yeah. had to be the second yeah. last one because that was. Uh, Billy Gunn was a coach on season six with yeah. Booker and Lita, and then Hulk, okay. Miz, and Paige and Daniel Bryan were the judges. Uh, very, very cool. Yeah, I, I've always, I always enjoyed the type. Way back when, in the first tough enough, I got so pissed they never actually did anything with Maven. I don't remember if he got hurt or what happened to him, but when Maven won the very first tough enough, I was like, "Ooh, cool, very cool." So, uh, anyway, what else you got? Uh, well, let's cover some of the bad. Uh, <laughs> so that's, but that's all good, and I'm. You know, hopefully China goes in on her own someday, and it's really good to see her. She deserves, she needs to be in the Hall of Fame. She's a huge part of women's wrestling, and a huge part of why it's now main eventing WrestleMania. Uh, Negative stuff to talk about. Uh, Let's just get it out of the way. Hell with it. Uh, SmackDown may be going to three hours when it hits Fox. Uh, please don't. <laughs> okay, I, I said Smack, this. One of the reasons SmackDown's been good is because it's shorter. Yeah, exactly. I, I said this to one of my old high school buddies on Facebook when this was when the story broke. I said, please no. I love SmackDown. I love WWE. But that's Raw's problem is that it's three hours and they have to fill time and they have to do this and they have to do that. We do not need a weekly version of WrestleMania on two different nights. Basically, you have a full-on WrestleMania pay-per-view each week once this once SmackDown goes three hours, because Raw is three hours. SmackDown might, might end up being three hours. That's six hours of wrestling television per week, not counting any of the, any of the reality shows, yeah, not, counting, the, yeah. not counting any tough enough stuff that might be happening, not counting 205 Live or whatever NXT. else. NXT, not counting main event. Main, main event. event. Yeah, exactly. All that stuff. If like, they bring the Facebook stuff back. It's too much stuff for for them yeah. to write. Yeah, absolutely. It's, they're they're it's just too shooting much. themselves in the foot. And hey, let's segue into my other negative, because uh, this is part of the same problem. Uh, it's also too much stuff for the guys to work. And segue straight into, if you haven't seen it already, check out John Oliver's Last Week Tonight. Did nearly the entire show, so his longest segment, was on the WWE. The wrestler's status as independent contractors, which I think we've talked about it before in the show. I know I talk about it a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, And just sort of the mistreatment of talent. They need an off-season. They need fewer shows, not more shows. It's, we've talked about it a lot on this show, and we just touched on it with the Hall of Fame stuff. Uh, you know, we talk say it all the time. How many of the wrestlers that we grew up with are gone? Yeah. Or you know, have health issues or other problems? Yeah, it's, it's one after the other, and yet the WWE continues to just make billions and billions of dollars. And yeah, it's keep, crazy. People say, you know, it's unfair. Why do people always pick on the WWE for this? Well, they're the ones that can afford it. They're one of the only ones. And keep in mind that the people who work in their offices have better health care and more days off and sick leave and everything else. And none of the wrestlers, too. It's ridiculous to me. And there are people who will say, well, they get paid well. Or, you know, well, that's what they sign up for. I don't, I don't care. understand I, how you can be that callous about I, it. I don't care if it's they get paid well. I don't care if that's what they signed up for. No. Any job, whether you love it or not, any job, especially WWE, a sports job, whatever you want to call it, entertainment job, if you absolutely love it, like, like the John Cena's of the world, puts in all this work and all this time, it's not just what we see on TV that they're getting paid for. 
John's getting paid for promotions, the this, the that, any of the commercials. I mean, obviously the com- like merchandise, the, like, like like the merchandise things, like when he does, you know, when he, our perfect example, not John, but um, only because I remember it was this person's commercial, not John's. When Savage uh, did, when, when Macho Man did, um, Slim into a Slim Jim. You know, yeah. yes, Slim Jim and whomever is behind that is paying him, but I'm sure also WWE is paying him because they have they have him and his WWE persona kind of thing. But going back to John Cena, it's he's there working on his character. He's there telling the the the, the script people to you know my character would do this, my character would do that. Let me work on this. Let me work on that. I have to sign all of this stuff. And it's not, I have to sign all this stuff. It's he wants to be there. Like go back and watch that original. It was a purple shirt, John Cena DVD case. The the very first John Cena deep when back when WWE was I marketing DVDs, the John Cena story or whatever it was, watch that. And the man was doing work for WWE for, at least a full week, at least 12 hours a day, not just what we see on Raw, on SmackDown, on pay-per-views. They still do non-filmed house shows. For How about, how about we do this? How about you take the non-filmed house shows away and give them those days off? Like, well, instead of doing a Saturday night non-televised event, like... That's part of the problem, though, is that that's one of the ways WWE make money and when we're talking about the talent being overworked, uh, Ambrose, who we'll talk about in a little bit when we get to WrestleMania, but Dean Ambrose, for example, two years ago was the guy who worked the most matches, and he had over 300 matches in the year. Owens was second and had over 300 as well. That's too much. You look at the NFL, which is also a very physical sport, and there's a lot of contact. There's a lot of contact in wrestling, too, even though it's, you know, supposed to be, again, if you've ever seen it live, it's ridiculously well choreographed and well done, but it's still not easy, and you still hurt after it. And the NFL, though, they get an entire off season, and you at least get some consideration and time to kind of heal up your body, not to mention one game a week. Not, hey, you have to go out and wrestle seven days this week. Like, it's ridiculous to me that there's... I'm trying to dance around it, but I mean, I feel like the Just, wrestlers need to unionize. It's... Yeah. I don't... I, they have goods and bads. God knows I've experienced the bad. But anyway, they they need to be protected. And they, it's, really, it's really callous to me for... People who just say, oh, they knew what they signed up for. Like, no, they should be able to spend time with their kids and not be crippled for life. Exactly. You look at, you you said it earlier, you look at NFL, NBA, NHL, and MLB. All four of the major American sports, they all have players unions. Whoa, whoa, NHL, totally Canadian. Come on, man. Anyway, sorry. That's that's no, you're right. that's that's ch whatever the hell you guys have up there anyway. But it's one of those things. I'm saying like the NHL in general. Oh, yes, yeah. there they are Canadian a, yeah. hockey teams. I'm not saying there isn't, but I'm saying NHL headquarters is in Toronto, as far as I know. It's somewhere here in the states. I don't know. It's whatever. A, it's point. in Toronto, but anyway. <laughs> the point is, no, is yeah, that that's your point because you're right. <laughs> is that all of these four major sporting? Things, leagues, whatever you want to call them, they all have players' unions. You look at the baseball strike. What was it? The nineties, ninety. Uh, when was that? Nine, the strike in ninety three or ninety four? Somewhere in the nineties, there was a baseball strike, and we didn't have baseball for almost a whole season or two. Um, I yeah, don't think I don't think it was ninety three. I think it was like ninety four, ninety five, or ninety six. Because I know the ninety three World Series was whatever. But the point is, Toronto Jays. Yeah. The best. Uh, anyway, so uh, I <laughs> at least you didn't say the expos. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but so but, anyway, no, but it's... It, the, the point is, if all of these four major leagues can have players' unions and players can go on strike if they're not being treated fairly or if they're not getting paid enough 
or whatever, then WWE needs a wrestlers union. Uh, all, and, and, also, you know, also to be blunt, all of those that you just listed get paid more money and work fewer days. Exactly. <laughs> like, I just, uh, it's yeah, it's baffling to me. But yeah, the John Oliver thing, it was a really good segment. I was impressed with the fact that he's clearly a fan and it was well put together. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll probably embed that in the post so people can see it. I, I, well, I did watch well, it. Well, if you could find it, because WWE has tried real hard to get it pulled, seemingly. It is one of the only segments that's not available on his official site. Or, sorry, official YouTube channel, I should say. Oh, it's not on YouTube anymore? Nope. Damn. Yeah, um, it's it's like some multi-billion dollar corporation doesn't want it available. Um, wait I a won- second. I wonder who that could be. Um, it's available, but it's not. Uh, it's not available from his channel unless it's gone back up again. Okay, I have. Let me see. Let me see if it's still here. Sorry, folks. Yeah, it's not. Anyway. Yeah, I got it. It's on the last week tonight, uh, published on March 31st, 2019. Yeah, it's on the last week tonight uh, channel. So I don't know if that's his actual channel. I assume, obviously, that's his show channel, but it's right there. I'm on it, and it's not there. Whatever. Uh, In any case. It's right there. Uh, It'll be in the show notes, folks. Uh, Yeah, I mean... We'll argue about this off air now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one of those things that, like, part of, other than life stuff happening to both of us, it's like I'm just watching it to keep up at this point. I'm I, yes, I enjoy certain moments and certain bits and things like that, but I'm not watching WWE for doing the podcast at this point. I'm not watching W. I'm I like I said, I enjoy certain moments, but. Overall, both programs, I fast forward, and this is on the the condensed versions. Like, I'm watching both of these next day on Hulu. Uh, SmackDown is not condensed. It is still two full hours, but Raw, that's condensed to like an hour and 30 minutes. I still fast forward the bits that I don't care about. Eh, you just watch it. I've still been enjoying it. I enjoyed the pay-per-views. Uh, it's been significantly improved since the start of the year overall. And speaking of which, let's roll into WrestleMania. Yes, WrestleMania 35. So we're likely to open, apparently, with the two Battle Royals. I don't want to talk too much about them, because to be honest, I don't care. Uh, I I I I think the biggest point here that we have to talk about is the fact that they're actually giving away content for free. Because the kickoff show will air on USA. Yeah, the kickoff show is likely to be those two battle royals, and then they'll probably dump one of the matches there. But I just... <laughs> I don't know. The Women's Battle Royal, I'm glad they're doing it. Uh, so, touch on this just for a second. There are too many wrestlers in WWE. They've signed too many of the people from the independents. And it goes for both genders but when we're talking about the women uh there's a lot of talent in the battle royal that don't have wrestlemania matches notably asuka who has absolutely got the short end of the stick however so is naomi uh the one i wanted to point out though is somebody we haven't talked about in a while because she hasn't been on tv and that's dana brooke who she finally showed up to face ronda rousey on raw i don't know if you saw the segment, but yeah, I saw the segment. So uh, she cut, uh, I thought, her best promo I think she's ever done, and then you know got beat up by Rousey in three seconds, and then they had a match where she lost in about the same time next week. But she looked pretty good, and she's an example to me of somebody that we talked about this when she first came up. I thought she came up a little too early. And she didn't necessarily make the impact I think they were hoping for. And then she just kind of got buried and disappeared and hasn't been on. 
how are you supposed to get any better if you don't have any time and they don't give you any matches? Yeah, with Naomi... Like, and Yeah, Naomi is somebody that's already there, but I'm talking about somebody that's young and they apparently thought something of... And, okay, fine, it didn't go as you hoped originally. But that doesn't mean she doesn't deserve another chance, or shouldn't... You know, how is she supposed to grow as a wrestler, though, if you just don't have her on television or have her do anything? And then you go down the list. Carmella disappeared after having the title for a while, whether you like her or not, but she oh. was a title holder, holder, and she just completely disappeared. Uh, oh, well, she didn't disappear. She um, Well, they do occasional dance breaks, but they had entire she, weeks where she wasn't on. Yeah, well, like, from her championship run to now, like... I, she's not on nearly as much, though, and then... I mean, I'm a, I'm a, you know... Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, they were doing something with, well, they disappeared off TV suddenly, and that got axed. Uh, the Riot Squad show up every week to get beat up by Becky, Charlotte, and Ronda. And Ronda. Uh, but at least they're on TV. Mickey yeah. James shows up once in a while. Selena Vega only shows up to accompany Andrade. So they have all this talent. And, uh, yeah, I've listed all those people. A few of them are not only former title holders. But I look at somebody like Asuka or Naomi, who should have titles now. They are very good. Mm -hmm. And they just, they don't have anything to do. They all get dumped into this battle royal. And then you look at the men's one. You've got the Hardy boys. You've got Braun Strowman, who has nothing to do, except they're doing the stuff with the SNL. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> I just, yeah, anyway, I don't care about that. Uh, Owens doesn't have a match. Like, uh, Ali, Mustafa Ali, who they've been pushing, and who has been absolutely fantastic, no match. I just, and the, uh, I don't know, there's too many people, and then you've got Dean Ambrose, we wanted to talk about. It looks like he's leaving. Yeah. And he's another guy. He's got quite a bit of talent. People like him, but he's just lost in the shuffle. Because they have so many bloody people right now. Well, what needs to happen, and I, I, do, I do and I don't want this to happen, but what needs to happen is, if hopefully Seth beats that dumbass. Yeah, Brock I'm, needs to leave. We'll get to that yeah, when we yeah, talk about the match. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. No, no, no. But, but, but my point here is, if Seth beats him, great. Absolutely. Kick Brock out. Whatever. Also, also if, dumbass. That's not very nice. It's not Brock's fault uh -huh. that... You know, McMahon lets him show up, and I would do the exact same thing if they offered me money. I don't well, blame him for it at all. It's not his fault. It's just, I think it's poor planning, and I think the WWE, it's just not a good idea to have him around. But So my point is, if Seth wins, great. Absolutely want Seth as Universal Champion. Champion that way will have actual... Universal Championship matches on the shows. If Seth loses, just get the fucking shield back together. Roman's not... Roman's, what, fighting Drew? Roman's not in any championship chase right now. No, get but I think that's a back. good... It's like, a good program for him, and it's a good way to kind of get him back in. Like, uh, yeah. I'm not... I don't want to knock his health or anything like that, but, you know, is he 100% and that kind of thing? Right. It's a good program for him, and Drew's definitely somebody who can A, work, no, no. And, and B, he looks strong and believable. Absolutely. Uh, I'm not saying that the Drew McIntyre match isn't going to be good for Roman, whatever. For no, I just, I, I'm, I'm I just saying think that it's pretty high profile still, oh, though. It, I don't it think is. it's a big... No, I'm not, I'm not saying it's a, it's a, it's a pre-show match. I'm saying that Roman currently is not in the yeah. championship chase. If Seth loses, Dean's not really doing anything. Put the shield well, back together, you bastards. If, if he's employed. Okay, but that's what I'm saying. In order to get him to stay, put the shield back together. Let them do what they're supposed to do. Let them be what the, they're supposed to be. By the and, way, if he, if he stays, by the way, what I would do is... Personally, just me playing fantasy booker. Uh, Rollins wins the title. 
uh, McIntyre beats Reigns and says, I beat up two of the Shield. I'm going to, I should fight you now, Seth. I'm going to take you out for the title. Mm -hmm. And then Roman moves on to, you know what, Dean, I'm not happy with the stuff you said about me while I was gone. And they have a high profile thing. You can get them back together after that. But yeah, yeah, that's I fine. Would, I think it would be a good, a good stuff for all of them. And they'd be at the top of all the cards. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah, so, from, from high profile stuff to not high profile stuff. Uh, how about something else that doesn't excite me? Kurt Angle's final match versus Baron Corbin on WrestleMania. Uh, Okay, talk about too many people at this point with them changing the whole thing and essentially the McMahon family being the new version of the Authority or the same version of the Authority, just including Vince Moore kind of a thing. Uh, Baron Corbin, while he is a great athlete and he has done some interesting things, he's lost a lot of shit in the last year and a half. He hasn't done much. He was a piss-poor general manager. He got fired because he lost a match from being general manager. Put this guy on 205 lock. Bury him. Like, instead of burying Rey Mysterio or Kevin Owens, I know Kevin's currently injured or something, you know, whatever. I don't, I, I don't think Baron's in the weight class for 205 lock. <laughs> okay, but I'm saying, like, put him on main event and just don't put, like, get him off Raw. Get him yeah, off Corbin. SmackDown. Corbin's got talent. My issue with this is just... Uh, it makes sense for the storyline that Kurt would want revenge, but it's just, it's his final match. It should be something, it feels like it should be something more high profile. He's, okay. he's right. one of so, the best wrestlers they've ever seen. Uh, the general it, consensus is that most people want Cena to come back because that would bookend his career. Yes. And get yeah. out of my head because that's exactly what no, I was going to say. No, that's exactly what I was going to say. I'm like, okay, so yeah. get Corbin out of there, get Baron out of there, put Cena versus Angle, ruthless aggression part two or something yeah. or other, kind of a thing like a final send off but, but farewell. But of course, the big question, unfortunately, is is Cena available? True. Yeah, because he's um, busy he's doing a lot of films, and good for him, by the way. That yeah, he's absolutely. getting all these chances. Yeah. Uh, I, okay, I'm a dumb white boy from dumb white boy America here, but even I got offended with what character direction they took with Carmella, with pairing her up with Naomi, and basically making her tan herself to look a certain way, let's say. Uh, so about that, uh, quick note, that is actually her skin. Uh, no, it's not. She's actually white. Yeah, no, she is, but that is essentially her skin now. That's a she. She's been tanning too much. Uh, okay, but point is, is that um, also where the hell did this come from? Because we were talking about the women's stuff earlier, and I didn't get to bring it up. But it's I mean, one of those things where it's like you talk about things that disappear and then reappear. It's like her and doing her and truth with the dance breaks. Yeah, sure, great, fine. And now her, formerly her and Naomi doing their thing or whatever, and I'm like, oh, all right. I don't get this at all. I, I just don't understand it. But, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, Shane McMahon versus The Miz. Folks, count any yes, more that. Yes. Can we just get this over with? Uh, my issue is that Shane's another kind of part-timer, much like Brock, and I don't not a big fan of him being on TV when they've already got so many wrestlers who don't have programs. Uh, my other issue is trying to make Miz look tough. They've completely buried poor Sanity, who uh, Sanity lost a three-on-one handicap match to The Miz on SmackDown. And it was the second time Sanity have, A, been beat up by The Miz, B, the second time they've appeared in about three months. So that's not good. Whatever. Well, you know really why they... Care. Yeah, you know why they keep uh, putting the Miz out there, right? Because they hate us. Because I what? Because if they hate us. No, I know. It's because well, of his show. It's because uh, Miz and Mrs. Season 2. Also, I just think Miz works better as a heel. He's a great bad guy. Yeah, he, he talks is. talks really well. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Yep. Next. Uh, Orton versus Styles, which... 
holy cow, I was not interested in this at all. And then the last few weeks, the build's been fantastic with the two of them just roasting each other. Styles brought up Orton's suspension for uh, drug use from years ago. Mm-hmm. Orton repeatedly brings up Styles not being a big star until now. And just, they, I suspect they get along really well in real life because they've done a really good job of building this up and making it surprisingly interesting. And it should actually be a good match. So, good for both of them. Yeah, I think. Absolutely, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm bringing up somebody from ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I just, usually that's my thing. I'm just surprised. All right, fine. Uh, the next match, which, by the way, I will also put into the holy cow, why am I interested in this when I wasn't expecting to be, Batista versus Triple H in the No Holds Barred match, which, uh, wow. Uh, So this week, again, they just had Batista came out. He showed a package of him beating Triple H up on different occasions and just said, kiss my ass on her and left. Mm -hmm. The build for it has been really good and unsurprisingly, Triple H delivered some really good promos. But the one thing I wanted to touch on, and I wish I'd mentioned this with Angle, I don't know if you watched any of Raw or the highlights this week, but if you can, track down the vignette they did for Angle showing his career. And the vignette they did for this feud, Batista and Triple H, uh, the WWE vignette people, like the people that put together these little highlight the video packages, packages yeah. always do such a great job. I honestly wish that they would get a chance to do some of the writing if they don't already. Because they do such a good job of just encapsulating everything so quickly. And you get hyped for it. I know they're going to do it during WrestleMania as well. They love showing the vignettes like right before the match. And we talked about it last year, if you remember, how good they were. Mm -hmm. Now, the vignette for Hunter and Batista, was that the one where, is that when he showed, before he showed up and said, kiss my ass, the one before it where he just pointed to the screen and it started? Yeah, he didn't say anything, which I thought was good. And then I'll, I liked that. I feel like Batista's, Batista, both of them have played their roles really well. And they've done it in a way that they're not overshadowing anything else, but you're still interested in it. I'm really impressed with both of them. Yeah, it, it it's done really, really well. And you're right; these these vignette video people need to be doing part of the writing or part of the whatever kind of a thing. Uh, I want to talk about really quickly, and this is like they need to come up with some new moves, um, specifically Brock and Batista. For a while now, WWE has not used Pyro. Yep. They stopped using Pyro. Because it costs well, money. Obviously. Can't, can't, if you can't afford health insurance, can't afford Pyro. Exactly. <laughs> well, between Brock and Batista, they both had specific beats within their entrance that the... Like, Batista specifically, there was a point in his theme song, which is uh, one of the songs by Saliva, uh, I, I Walk Alone. Uh, in that, the song kind of stops, the pyro goes off like a, like a gun or whatever he's doing kind of a thing, like he's doing the machine, like he's on his, he's like squatted down and doing the machine gun kind of thing. Well, obviously they stopped doing the pyro, so they need to find a way to work. It's more prevalent with Brock's because Brock has that one, like, big giant step kind of thing where he's like crushing somebody's face off or something, but... It's only with those two, but seriously, people, what uh, they also on the probably, Yeah, they also probably don't want to do it for Batista right now, because he's supposed to be the bad guy. So, Well, true. But yeah, I'm, with, with Brock, just, it would make sense, because he's just flat out supposed to be a spectacle. That's been the whole thing, right? Yeah. That's why he doesn't show up often. It's supposed to be a big deal. Yeah. It, it's, it's a disappointment every fucking time. Not at this point. Anyway. I mean... I, oh, did next. you know? I'm, I'm sure you knew that. Uh, I 
time read this, I think it was on Cage Side Seats, uh, that uh, the Seth Brock thing from the Go Home show to, to WrestleMania for Raw was actually supposed to go the other way, where Seth got yeah, it was changed. Out of, yeah, it yeah, was changed. Now, Thank now, God it was changed. Now yeah, but now I'm worried, because usually when you win on the show beforehand, you lose, you lose. the pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Uh, so, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Uh, another one. Solid match. I feel like Drew should probably win to kind of keep his... To keep him going. Especially if Brock finally leaves. Because you need a good, strong, bad guy. Yeah. You know, feels like Drew can do that. I would like that. Uh, Reigns... Uh, oh, we haven't really talked about this. Uh, it's really good seeing him back. It is, yeah. That is a flat-out feel-good story. No negatives or anything. It's great that he's recovered and will hopefully inspire other people who have you know, leukemia or other forms of cancer yeah. that, hey, you can win. You can go back to what you were doing. Yep, absolutely. Uh, and the build for it has been good, although... Uh, I'm not sure why. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm not sure why they had Drew beat up uh, poor Dean Ambrose two weeks in a row in basically the same match, but Amb- yeah. if Ambrose is leaving, they have a tendency to do that where guys just kind of lose. Like Gallows and Anderson. Who talk about it. In uh, about four seconds. Yeah, talk about a team that has basically gone away. Yeah. I think it sucks because they're really good, but yeah. whatever. Anyway, uh, next we have the Cruiserweight Championship match, Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nese. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, I has the potential to steal the show. Buddy Murphy has been a revelation and been fantastic, but unfortunately he's relegated to 205 Live. <laughs> so I don't know if the audience is going to respond, and that kind of sucks. All right, I'll just move on. Uh, women's Tag Team Championship match. Uh, well, we're getting into the multi-person matches now. Uh, we've got Banks and Bailey who hold the title, versus Nia Jax and Tamina Snuka, versus Beth Phoenix and Natalia, versus the Iconics. Okay, this is what I was going to say earlier about Naomi. More Naomi than Carmella, because Carmella would just be there for a distraction. I'm sorry. The Iconics, like, I have zero interest in their gimmick, in their characters. Um, Take them out of there and put Naomi in just to get her in with her and Carmella. Because, like, I'd rather see Naomi go up against the Divas of Doom, which is Beth and Natalya. Um, It would be nice to, like, Ruby Riot and Mm -hmm. the Riot Squad, for example, give them something after getting beat up week after week, or... Yeah. um, But yeah, I mean, I don't mind the Iconics. They're supposed to be annoying, but yeah, and... Phoenix and Natalia is interesting. It's two people who, Natalia at least, has been around uh, and stayed around for this period of women's wrestling being significantly improved and focused on. But she's another one. You know, she was from the same time as Phoenix when they weren't interested in actually having them wrestle. And so it's nice that, yeah, that both of them are together and get the chance to do this. Also, they're essentially best friends in real life. So that's cool. Uh, Tamina, unfortunately, is still a charisma vacuum. And yeah, um, yeah she feel mean sucks. saying it, but she sucks lots, is what what he's trying to say, folks. Uh, I don't um, like saying that. But yeah, yeah she, well, you didn't say it; I said it. Yeah, well. <laughs> Whatever. Next uh, is another multi-person tag match. Uh, the this Usos, time, Ricochet, yep. Alistair Black, The Bar, and Shinsuke and Rusev. Shinsuke. Um, Shinsuke. That's what it should be called. That's or what it should be called. Or Ruske. Ruske. There you go. Ruske. Hey, you Ruske. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I know you used to. I, I, I think you still do like Ricochet and Aleister Black. But 
honestly, they're great, they, but they've just much like everybody else, just been called up. They're just kind of there. They're just kind of there. Yeah, honestly, I want the Usos to retain. Yeah, I do too. The Usos are one of the they're one of the most underrated tag teams I think ever. They're consistently terrific and just yeah, they don't seem to get. The recognition as some of the others. Well, yeah, I'd be fine with that. At the very least, this should be a really good match because everybody involved uh, can wrestle. Yep. Next, we have speaking of two people who can wrestle. Geez, uh, Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio. This has to be the most uneven match I've ever seen. Why? What do you mean? Um, look at Samoa Joe and then look at Rey Mysterio. Oh. Yeah, I mean, way more. What about? Uh, when Braun Strowman was feuding with Kalisto, remember? That's true. But yeah, it's this would be a really good match. Uh, Joe has is still fantastic. Mysterio has entered some sort of time machine and remains just amazing. He did apparently get injured on Monday. Hopefully, it doesn't affect Sunday. But yeah, we'll see. But yeah, this is another match that could steal the show. Two guys that are just. Great, and it's nice to see Joe have a title. The build for it has not been great, but whatever. These are two people that can work really well. I think fans will be into it just because they're really terrific. So, next intercontinental title match: Finn Balor versus Bobby Lashley. Why did they spoil that Balor's going to be the demon? Wouldn't it have been way cooler if he surprised everybody? Uh. Yeah, maybe don't mention it all, but this is what WWE does. They just they ruin they, any type of surprise. They spoil everything more than trailers do. Um, it's like I, it's like you and I. We were talking about this earlier. Uh, wouldn't it be amazing if Corbin comes down the ramp and Cena suddenly like hits him from behind, and it's Kurt yeah. Angle versus Corbin? It's almost as if they're spoiling that. It's, yeah, it seems sort of like. Uh, you know, it would be cool if uh, you've got Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush come out and they're in the ring and, you know, Bobby Lashley's, you know, real confident, everything's great. And then Balor comes out as the demon and suddenly he's worried, that kind of thing. It would have been so much more interesting, but no, let's ruin it in the friggin' Raw. Let's make Finn yell weird <laughs> in a vignette. Like, uh... I I like Finn, and I like Bobby, but I don't like what they're doing with Bobby. Part of it's because the two of them, too, they've wrestled against each other about 12 times in the last couple well, of months. Well, like, the, the main part I don't like about Bobby, is, this is kind of what I guess Vince is allowing again, is these promoters or managers or whatever you want to call them. I'm sorry. I loved it when Bobby... And Leo were fighting, and Bobby just threw him across. The, I, like I want to see Bobby Lashley basically Hulk Hulkified. Well, I feel like know, that should have been their split instead of them just yeah, getting back together for no yeah, apparent reason. It was yeah, weird exactly. that suddenly they decided like, now nah, it's all good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that should yeah. have been the split. Bobby should be doing his own thing, his own story, kind of thing, whatever. Bobby versus Finn has me less than enthused. What also kind of stinks for Rush, who is really good, and in the the chances they've given him to actually wrestle, he's a fantastic wrestler, unsurprisingly. But he just he doesn't get to do it, and it's weird to me. But eh, whatever. All right, uh, do we really need to talk too much about Brock versus Seth? We no. both we both just want. It's no offense to him, and I really hope, by the way, they find a way to keep Paul Heyman around, because good God, he's... Yeah, Paul Heyman's great. some sort of national treasure. <laughs> he yeah. could read the phone book and make it just entertaining and terrific. He needs to yeah. be... Uh, first of all, he needs to be a voice actor. Why can we not get him on some show? Could you imagine as Paul Heyman as a villain on Batman the Animated Series or something? Yes, I could, actually. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, or make so, him, like, speak for Bane or something in an episode. Anyway. According to my information, there's 15 total WrestleMania matches. Out of the 15 matches, three of them are pre-show matches. So we have 12 matches yep. on the WrestleMania card. Yep. 
is that two twelve? Is that like two or three or four too many? Why do you th- why do you think I'm going through this so quickly? Yes, I know. And there's also yeah. too many multi person matches. That's what I was yeah. complaining about earlier. I just yeah. and it's it sucks because we're t- uh, like I said earlier, they have too many talented people because they have all these matches and all these people and look at all the people who are not who have nothing to do. Yeah. You know, Owens is a former world champion. Mustafa Ali has been dumped into the battle Royal and he's a terrific up and coming guy. And and same thing with the women. You've got Nikki cross who they haven't been able to find anything to do. She's terrific. Uh, Again, I mentioned like Dana Brooke. She's somebody who, how are you going to get better if you're young and you know, you haven't, worked if you don't get the chance to work like whatever and speaking of which actually hey this kind of segues into the next match Dan O'Brien versus Kofi Kingston Kofi been there for 11 years I'm very happy for him and it's it's kind of sad that it came at the cost of Mustafa Ali who got injured right. and Kingston replaced him and seemingly this is all because of that so kind of sad for Ali, but really good news for Kingston, who he's been very good for a long time. Kofi, whether he's on his own or whether he's in the New Day slinging waffles or pancakes or whatever, the power of positivity, has always been really, really good. And the, the build and for this has let him be fantastic, too. The build for this has basically improved Xavier and Big E's mic skills, because most of the time, Kofi hasn't. Kofi said a few things, at least the stuff that I've seen, but he hasn't said much. Every every time yeah. the new day come out, it's always Xavier and Big which, E talking about which, it. Yeah, which I also like, and I also feel like that might be something for the future, right? There might right. be a reason for that. They're hinting yeah, and, that you know, absolutely. But here's my problem with it. I hate Vince McMahon. I know you're supposed to hate him, but I like. I'm sorry. This whole thing of you're a B plus player, you're a this plus player, you're a this, you're a that, well, you know, you're a reason, whatever. So the reason for all that, though, and I like this, is they reversed roles in that that's exactly what Hunter had told Daniel Bryan all right. those years ago. And now Daniel Bryan's the bad telling guy that. telling somebody else that. Yeah, I understand that. But I'm saying, like, why is it that the that the storyline part of the writing had that, like, Kofi won that whatever it was, not the Battle Royal, but he won yeah, something to match. earn. Yeah, he won the Gauntlet match in order to go to WrestleMania. That should be it. Like, yeah, that, that was a bit much that they had the and then two they kept Gauntlet taking, matches in a row. But having said and, that, uh, well, I've, it's too bad I wanted, to get to, I wanted to get to that when we get to the main event in a minute, but uh, they had too many weeks, it feels like, of build-up for all these matches. Yeah. Like, there was too much contact and everything else. Having said that, though, I liked the tag team gauntlet thing, and I loved the Usos in it. I yeah, liked the idea cool. that they came out and they said, you know, we respect him, he's proved himself, we forfeit. I yeah. thought that was a cool moment. Yeah, it was. That that was a very cool moment. That was I neat, and it, and it helped everybody involved. Daniel Bryan's been amazing in this, too. I love the whole... He just talks down to Kofi the entire time, and yeah. he's doing the exact same thing everybody did to him, and it's just fun. It's got to be fun for him, because he gets to be on the other side, and he gets to play with as what he as, went through. Yeah, oh, absolutely. That has to be uh, amazing. As much as I love Rowan, please split the two of them up. Like, Daniel Bryan does not need Rowan. Like, I get it. I guess it's part of his heel character. Because yeah, he, it's a little weird, too. Also, it, uh, Rowan doesn't get to say anything. <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, Rowan... He's just kind of there in the background. Yeah, I mean, like, Rowan had more to say when he was a Wyatt family member. I mean... <laughs> it, it, hey, speaking of people who haven't been on TV... What the hell <laughs> I know, right? I know, right? Yeah. Uh, whatever. Anyway, so... Uh, then we get to the main match, which... The build has been amazing for it, but it seems like the build has been going on forever, and there's just been so much contact. 
it's know, lasted way too long. Yeah, it like, feels like it's been a little too much, but whatever. I think it, it did its job. I mean, people want to see it now. I mean, the the whole thing this week leading up into WrestleMania, I'm sorry, the police car thing, <laughs> that just took the cake for me. I was like, I okay, was- yes. I, I want to yeah. see the match, but like you're doing too much. Yeah, I think it was it was goofy, but I thought it was still goofy in a fun way. But I understand. I know a lot of people have complained about it, and I think it's fair. Also, by the way, total side note: I feel like we, you and I, talked about this on a on a on a movie review years ago. But throw it out here. Let's say you're the police. Why do you let WWE make you look so dumb? I realize I, know, right? I realize that these guys are actors or wrestlers that they hired, and they're not real police officers. But it's the same thing that, you know, WWE or somebody will always go like, yeah, and we'd like to thank the police officers for letting us do this. It's the same thing as when you watch a movie that makes the CIA look stupid. You know, you watch a Bond movie where the CIA can't do anything confidently, and one dude is able to unravel and fix everything, or something like that. I like, mean, man, this, <laughs> why, like, why would you then go, like, oh, I, I think I'm glad we took part in this. No, it made you look dumb. Come on. <laughs> yeah, this this go-home thing with Rhonda, Charlotte, and, and Becky. These once are the they worst were, cops well, ever. Once they were handcuffed, I was like, oh my god. And then they got out into the back with the cars and the kicking in the, kicking and they, the yeah, they out of the window. Them in the same car for some exactly. Reason. And then the, you know what's going to happen. Like, okay, so a couple of things. Yes, I know this is also part <laughs> creative. And yes, I know this was also partially planned. I'm sorry. The police car that Rhonda was in and the police car that they tried to put Becky in, which is the same car as Rhonda's. Did not have a cage. No, Rhonda no, ended yeah, up in the front <laughs> seat. That's not yeah. a real. Pol- that's not a like true police no, car kind of what? thing. And the thing of it is, is by the end of it, when they tried tried to do a Dean move and have her drive off in it or whatever, or crash into the other police car, I'm like, I would rather see Braun Strowman. With with the with the hydraulic whatever flip over the truck on Roman again or whatever it was you know that big stupid ridiculous over the top WWE moment that they did with uh, with Braun and Roman with the, the truck thing yeah in, I know what you're I'm saying like, I, I thought it was over the top enough but I'll say this though it was an ambulance my favorite anyway. my favorite thing of the entire thing though was the fact that you've got Ronda and Charlotte who are screaming like bloody murder and are upset and everything else. My favorite thing in the whole thing was Becky, who her reaction is just kind of like, really, again? All right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, she funny. just got arrested a couple weeks ago. She she was by far the calmest out of all of them. She was just, and she literally said that at one point. She just said, oh, come on, again? <laughs> yeah. I, just, I got a kick out of that. I thought that was funny. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see the, the triple threat match and the fact that it's for both championships. Yeah, so I wonder if this means the brand split's done, because that's been a rumor for a while. Also, we keep having people show up on both shows lately. Yeah, I mean, I'm fairly sure the brand split is done simply because they stopped brand splitting the pay-per-views. Yeah, they just have um, too many people to to yeah. really do it, too. Like. Yeah, SmackDown's I mean, only two hours, and you have all these people that can't well, show up. So I mean, they add that extra hour. No, shut up. No, show up. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm saying it's it's the truth. If they add that extra hour and make it three hours long, then it's I, gonna. I also like. So I think uh, I can't remember if it was last year or maybe two years ago. But in any case, that was probably last year. In any case, they've set up kind of a feel good possibility at the end of this like i feel like if you have kofi seth and becky win people are going to be really happy Mm -hmm. like there's the possibility that they might actually have a wrestlemania where the fans are happy that's how it used to be you know you know i'm not saying it's entirely realistic or anything like that but remember the old ones you know you'd have it ends with hogan hits the leg drop yep you know, and everybody goes home, you know, all the good guys won, and people are happy. 
I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So it might be kind of cool if they do that. I, they've set it up, but I, but yeah. it, it's going to be, for me, it's just going to be a huge downer if Brock retains and we're stuck with another year of... If they would just... Okay, yes, I get it. He's a, he's a circus freak. He's a this, he's a that, he's a whatever. He's only there when he wants to be there. He's being paid to not be there, whatever it is. If they would just give him, or make him do, or pay him to do, two matches every six months on Raw, where he potentially loses the... Like, like, I'm not saying it needs to be a Brock Lesnar open challenge. It never will be, obviously. But I do not want another year, uh, another no. you know, long line of years of Brock holding up that you. What the fuck was the point in creating the Universal Championship if it's only universally belonging to one guy? I mean, well, essentially. Or if it just doesn't show up. Well, true. But, I mean, like, essentially, Brock Lesnar is the Thanos of the WWE. Snap his fingers and he won't do shit. They, yeah, we'll see what happens. But I also feel like, so The Undertaker is an old school guy, obviously. And yep. one of the things he did before he left was make sure that Reigns, who's a younger guy, who's still there, you know, he put him over the term and let him yeah. win it would be nice if Brock kind of sticks around to do the same like my hope is that so my hope is Rollins wins and that's kind right. of one of the sends off I don't mind if Lesnar comes back to put over somebody else like maybe they okay. let Finn or one of the or Kevin or one of the younger guys have a program with him I'd be okay with that I just don't like that the belt never shows up, because it feels like exactly. it's not even a part of the show. The problem with having Brock put anybody over at this point, like right now, today, is that, number one, he's too big of a I-don't-give-a-shit kind of a guy. He's got too big of a ego. Like, he wants that recognition. He wants that belt. He wants, like, there, there was a whole story yeah, I mean, last I, year where he was like, I'm gonna win it back, and I'm taking it away. I mean, we say that, but we don't know him behind the scenes. Right, exactly. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just gonna pretend that, you know, he has the same respect for the business that somebody like The Undertaker has to kind of, you know, no, come back. No, I, I, I don't think he does. I don't think he does either. But let's just I say, don't think he does. Let's just I mean, say he did. I don't know. I don't think he does. Go go back and watch um, uh, the Stone Cold podcast or whatever no, it was. I know, that, yeah. Well, yeah, not only no, that, I, but we talked about Dean Ambrose, right? And right. I personally feel like the beginning of the end for Ambrose was the Lesnar thing where he just didn't want to work with him. Yeah. I feel like that kind of burns poor Dean out, and I don't yeah. blame him for it. Like, it's got to suck. You get you get put into this big profile against their biggest guy, and you just don't get to do anything. Yeah. It it, just, it's, it's nuts. It yeah. really is nuts. It, it's just super silly. Um, was there anything else you wanted to bring up? No, I mean, overall, uh, I hope we haven't seemed super negative, but this is one of the better, this feels like a good card. I'm legitimately it, yeah, it interested feels like in it, seeing a lot of these matches, and I don't know who's going to win all of them, yeah. for once. It <laughs> seems like a really good card. I just have not, like, like I said at the beginning of the podcast. I didn't even watch Fastlane. Like, I was going to. I had planned to watch it because I, whether we're recording or not, I still watched to keep, you know, to keep yeah. up and whatever. I just didn't. I mean, I, you've had other I stuff just didn't. And, and, and certain, it's more. You know, there's, there's a certain point where, you know, you got to find time and take care of important things versus yeah. spend time watching the 47 hours a week of pro wrestling that WWE cranks out. <laughs> And it's one of those things where, like, yes, you're right. Now that we've talked about it, I'm a little bit more excited about the card. I'm a little bit more excited about one match or the other match. I don't think there are too many bad matches on the card for WrestleMania 35. I think that, like you said earlier, there are too, too many of the multi-person matches, I yeah. think. 
Um, I think that's really where it hurts. Like, have the have the the Andre the Giant Battle Royal thing like they always do. Have the 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 women's and the men's tag team things, but I don't know. It, it just I, I don't know. It, I wasn't ex other than like I said the certain matches. I was not fully excited to watch WrestleMania 35 this year. It's just I just wasn't. No, and one of the things they, one of the things I feel like they really have to do going forward is find something for the women who don't hold belts to do. They always have storylines and stuff for other people who don't have belts. There's a bunch of those matches on this card that women really don't have any, and that's a downer, especially considering that right now they are probably the hotter act. Yeah. It's it's probably pretty close, and I definitely think that Kofi, people are super interested in him and his story, deservedly so. But, yeah, I really feel like the women, like Becky Lynch is just, man, uh, we could do like a whole sort of show or something on her meteoric kind of rise. Yeah, from, absolutely. It feels like it was only yesterday that they just never had anything for her to do. And she would only kind of show up once in a while. Yep. I I know that the final Raw before WrestleMania was on April Fool's, but I'm sorry. As much as I love Steph, that was the dumbest April uh. Fool's joke ever. <laughs> like, why would you want to ins- Haven't you had enough arm bars, yeah. Steph? Like, um, well, also, uh, the other <laughs> problem is I don't think it makes as great a joke when it's something people legitimately are afraid of and don't yeah. want to see. Exactly. Because they've done that enough. Uh, hey, let's insert the authority or the McMahon family into everything. Yep. It's crazy. It's... All right, folks. Um, I'm hoping. I'm, I've been told by a certain person that he will return for our WrestleMania episode. I'm not sure if I he said I'll be there. Will. Not you. Uh, oh, you don't even care. I'm fine. You'll always be here. You're, you're, you're never going away. Um... But Mike the Birdman Dodd may make an appearance on WrestleMania 35 for Mayhem Mike's. He said he's going to. I don't know. I've been trying to get some of our other wrestling uh, cohorts to join us, like TV's Mr. Neal or Optimus Solo or the guys from Simplistic Reviews or any of those. But every time I say, hey, you guys want to record a catch-up podcast or something? Other than Ryan, who I already know is going to be there anyway. Yeah, I'm meanwhile, like, me, who so, like, my wife doesn't here isn't interested in wrestling or anything. So it's the only time I necessarily get to talk about it, except for I got one other friend. So I'm always excited oh. to do it. But <laughs> So I guess this is huge news because the last time we recorded, you were not married. When did you get married? What? We're talking about this. Yeah, whatever. Uh, no, don't, no, I, I don't feel like this is podcast material. <laughs> sure it is. It's our personal lives. Why not? Like, I knew you guys were dating, but I didn't realize you got no, it's been a while ago. Oh, whatever. We just don't okay. bother updating Facebook or anything because neither of oh, us well. uses it. Yeah. All right. You can catch Ma'am Mike's on geekcastradio.com and this week geek.net. What is your Twitter, sir? I'm still at Night Bean on Twitter after I tried to delete it a number of times and it just keeps logging me back in. So just give <laughs> up. Eh, just keep it. It's not <laughs> hurting anything. And, you know. How else are you going to harass Jesse about certain things? Mm. Um, <laughs> I cannot believe he's reading transfer. I cannot, cannot believe he's reading transfer. Anyway, uh, I am at TFG and Mike. You can follow at This Week in Geek and at Geekcast Radio for the sh- perspective networks. Um, we will catch you next time here on Mayhem Mike's for WrestleMania. You just made the list! All clear. And now, a thought from Geico Motorcycle. It took 15 minutes to take a spirit animal quiz online. Please be the cheetah. Please be the cheetah. And learn your animal isn't the cheetah, but the far less appealing blobfish. 
Oh, come on. To add insult to injury, you could have used those 15 blobfish minutes to switch your motorcycle insurance to GEICO. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. GEICO presents oh, yet another voicemail from your roommate. Hi. So, about the kitchen. Turns out, when there's a grease fire, you're not supposed to throw water on it. <laughs> Who would have known, right? Anyways, the fire department is here, and it's totally cool. Give me a call back when you get a chance. The GEICO Insurance Agency could help keep your personal property protected. Like if danger is your roommate's middle name. Visit GEICO.com to see how easy it is to switch and save on renter's insurance.